Since the very beginning, Audemars Piguet made grand complications. For us, a grand comp has to have a chronograph, a split second, a minute repeater, plus the perpetual calendar. If one is missing, we don't consider it a grand complication. One of the first is here. The beginning of the fabrication is probably in 1882. It's a very classical grand comp. The early grand comps, really all the early pocket watches featured enamel dials as this example does. As we moved into the Art Deco period, we of course continued producing grand comps. In fact, Audemars Piguet never stopped producing grand complication watches throughout our history. This grand comp from the 1920s has clear distinct Art Deco aesthetics. The numerals you can see are these stylized Arabic numerals, and it has this beautiful black enamel geometric motif along the bezel. The third grand comp we're talking about here is a special piece that was made during the 70s. This is a very good example of a super pure, in terms of dial, mechanical watch with a, a minute repeater, chronograph, split second, and the perpetual calendar. Here we have a minute repeating pendant watch that was produced for Tiffany & Company. You can see the diamond set bezel and the beautiful blue guilloché enamel case back with the matching brooch portion. The important thing about pendant minute repeaters in the 1890s is these watches paved the way for the minute repeating wrist watches which would adorn men's wrists a short 15 to 20 years later. Here we have a phenomenal 1920s minute repeating wristwatch by Audemars Piguet. This example here was originally a pendant watch movement. It was born in a pendant watch, came back to the factory, and was then recased as a wristwatch. An eight line movement. Eight lines movement, minute repeater. To know that on 15.6 millimeters diameter, you can program the watch for 720 different melodies during every single minute in 12 hours. It's just amazing. We're now moving into really the 1940s on this particular piece. 1940s really distinguished this dial with this two-tone feature, the fantastic Arabic numerals which are outlined in black, moon phase at 12 o'clock, and what we call a linear calendar display. Let's have a listen to this example. One of the most important watch we have in our collection is the one that we call the John Sheffer. This is a minute repeater, two tones, that was cased and sold as a pendant watch in 1908, then transformed in 1923 in a wristwatch, which was quite common at that time, and personalized in 1927. Luckily, the owner, businessman named John Sheffer, had a name and surname with 12 letters. The next minute repeater we have is from 1924. It's distinguished by the really unusual repeat slide, which is not the traditional version. It's more of a lever that goes from bottom to top. And it's a white gold watch. That sound is so good that we have used it for research very recently to develop a new sound right. ring. Here we have an example from 1947, really a wartime era piece. This example is really distinguished by its extended lugs and its classic repeat slide. And similar to the pocket watches of this era, we started to move away from the traditional numerals to include some more abstract indexes, as this one features. The next watch is an exception. It's an exception because nobody remembers that Audemars Piguet has produced ladies' watches. This is one of the greatest masterpieces from the 1920s. At that time, Audemars Piguet was a watchmaker and we produced the movement. We let the greatest jewelers produce the case and the jewelry. Aiguillon made this one, Tutti Frutti, unique piece. Another thing Audemars Piguet is known for in terms of introducing styles of watches to the market is the Jump Hour wristwatch. This is one of the rarer examples distinguished by these reeded sides. Most of them are a little plainer and a little simpler. 
In addition to the jump hour, it has what's sometimes referred to as the wandering seconds, which is a very simple concept. It's just a, a wheel that makes its rotation and you can see the time from the indicator on the open aperture. At the end of the 20s, we began to produce wristwatches with a chronograph. This dial in uh, enamel inspired today model that is part of the line Jules Audemars. It's a very small movement, 11 lines, beautiful finishing. Mm. If you open the watch, you, you cry. We were very well known in the 1940s for our triple calendar chronographs. We did not make many of these. They become real collector icons. This piece is distinguished by the fact that it's a stainless steel and pink gold case. Beautiful complications here, date up at top. We have constant seconds and day of the week on this subsidiary dial. And we have over here the 30 minute register and month over here with moon phase aperture at the six o'clock position. Our production numbers are very small on these complications, which contributes to their collectability. But the 13 line Valjoux caliber was used on this calendar chronograph but it was also used on this particular timepiece here, our precision watches. So you can see it's a similar layout to a chronograph. We have the constant seconds here and the precision designation in the three o'clock position. Another variation of the 13 line Valjoux caliber is found on our world time watches. Audemars Piguet did not adopt the Louis Cartier style of world time watches. We had our own version and it really is just showing you the relative hour in the major cities around the world. Moving on to calendar watches. Here we have an example that was manufacturing began in 1930 and it was ultimately sold in 1942. It's a smaller size, triple calendar moon phase. What distinguishes this particular timepiece is the three tone dial. Outer in champagne or pink and then a silvered ring for the date and then the gilt color in the center. The next watch is absolutely one of my favorite watches, probably my favorite watch of the 20th century. This is Audemars Piguet reference 5516. This is our first perpetual calendar watch. And this is also what we believe to be the very first wrist watch made in a series to feature leap year indication. And this watch also features a beautiful two-tone dial. This watch has inspired our watchmakers in 1978 when they decided to redo perpetual calendars during the quartz crisis to prove that there was a future for mechanical watches and for complications. The 1970s and 80s continued to be as experimental for Audemars Piguet as any other decade had been, despite the fact we were in the midst of this quartz crisis. It's very much in the spirit of our founders to be continuing to push the envelope, continuing to honor the traditions while trying new things. And that's Audemars Piguet's legacy, past, present, and future.